right, my third album, Marble Jar. I'm not really sure what the general consensus on this album is, but it does appear to be my least popular album. Not one that people have been super drawn to. Seems to be uh, most people's thoughts and that, yep, that one exists. Or I don't really know. But, to, but for me, Marble Jar is one of my personal favorite releases. When I was separating out my albums and comps, this was the only one at the time that I thought, wow, I don't think there's much of anything I need to change about this one. I like the sequencing, I think it comes together as a whole better than most of my albums, and it's one that really fits well into my own personal taste. Even if it turns out I'm the only person who really loves Marble Jar, well, my music is designed for my own personal enjoyment first and foremost at the end of the day, as usual, I'm not offended if people think it's eh, and I'm going to continue to consider this one among my best work. Almost on par with Spiral Out of Control and probably more easily digestible than that one. I think a big part of that is the particular blend of genres focused on here. It's primarily a chill-out album that's kind of a hybrid of electronic and jazz, but one that still gets your foot tapping pretty consistently. It's mostly pretty mid-tempo, some slightly more energetic moments, some more down-tempo moments, but it's all brought together by that little hybrid of genres to various extents, paced in such a way that you don't get the same kind of track twice in a row, but still flows naturally together. There's no elements that come totally out of left field or don't fit into the sound of the album, but it's still varied enough to not become boring or one note. You can dance to it or chill out to it depending on your mood, and perhaps best of all, it's just a 256 Pi album with no strings attached. No tracks that are super inspired by other artists, no rip-off of other people's sounds, it's just... me. It's an album that just says, this is me, this is what I like, and that's its purest form of personal expression. But it's also an album that also heavily reminds me of being out in downtown Chicago. It just really does have that urban atmosphere to it. It's all really classy, but not to the point of snobbishness. Now that's not to say I don't have issues with it, and I'll just get out of the way the worst thing about the original album. The mixing and mastering on the 2011 original tracks is straight up terrible. Inexcusably so. There is so freaking much clipping audio all over the place, and it's not an album that could ever make sense to have that much clipping on purpose. I mean, it's a laid-back, chill-out, electro-jazz thing. Audio tearing there only undercuts what I was going for. What is especially embarrassing about that mastering is that I barely picked up on how truly terrible it was when I initially made the remastered versions of my first three albums in 2016. At the time, I thought, well, I'm redoing Bubble Machine and Dark Clouds, why not also redo Marble Jar? And I made the album into a continuous mix, because I, I love continuous mixes. But I had too much of an ego over the album's structure and sequencing to notice that I wasn't actually remastering the album at all. And furthermore, it was the album of mine that most needed actual remastering, by far. Which is exactly why earlier this year I life of pablo to this album. I just took it off of Spotify and iTunes and all the other places and re-released it as an actually remastered version. So that the audio levels were more consistent and it fit more with... I guess my initial vision? Like holding up the waveforms of the original versus the 2018 mix. It's night and day. One sounds good and the other squeezes shit on the ceiling and is too loud to fit in digital audio formats and not even consistently throughout the whole album. If you want to hear a comparison, the, the original unmixed Marble Jar is still has the piss poor mastering. I plan on keeping it that way as it's a good lear learning experience on some stuff not to do. If there's any other issues I have with the original Marble Jar, I did always have a pretty clear least favorite in the bunch with Inner City Cut Up. That track always felt pretty long and drawn out and got still way quicker than the others, mainly because I just copy-pasted an entire section <laughs> and it's really obvious. That's why I changed the arrangement slightly with the new 2018 version, bringing in some elements that I had from the original session so that it didn't quite as blatantly just feel copy-pasted in the middle. There's also a part of me who wonders if directly bringing back the melodies from Alfalfa at the end of the opener, now approaching, was the best of ideas, but I don't know what I could do to change it. It's cool as a reference. And I also think the 16-minute cut of Cotangent has kind of weird pacing that stops dead a few times and didn't really justify being as long as it was, hence my shaving like 40 seconds off the 2018 version. 
And heck, I'm not huge on all the transitions in the latest version either. There's one moment in particular where the intro ends with this noise that I think cuts into the groove of the following part. The original 12 minute version has no bang, just gets right into it, and honestly I probably prefer that particular cut above all later ones. Didn't really need changing in the first place. In fact, while I'm on the topic of Cotangent, I can probably use this as a segue to talk about individual tracks. Cotangent, I'm just gonna have to come out and say right here, is probably my favorite, my personal favorite track that I've ever made to date. Overall. <laughs> it's admittedly pretty close between it and Alfalfa, but that track was still pretty clearly inspired by Orbital. Cotangent is a little less derivative to me. I'm a bit more inclined towards it since, again, it's just a track that's just me, my own musical taste in distilled form. Apologies in advance for the extra egotism and dis on display when talking about this track, but yeah, it is one of those tracks that is really easy for me to nerd out over. It goes further than me than the fact that it was the first track I ever made to break the 10 minute barrier. Since that 2011 session, it came from Long Road on a uh, dirt bike. It was five pieces all stretched over 10 minutes, but most of them were really obviously split into multiple parts that didn't always flow into each other that well, and sometimes I just rehashed stuff from older material. Cotangent technically has multiple sections as well, but they all fit so well into each other. The organic sounding intro with the flutes and bells, the first section which is a bit more offbeat and IDM-ish, the second section that's kind of jazzier with its little waves of piano phrases. Do, 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 do. That second section is probably my favorite part of the track. But yeah, the whole thing just provides this moody experience that just coincidentally happens to bring together so much of the sounds that appeared throughout the rest of the album. Feels like going on the train ride back home late at night. Honestly, it's as perfect an ending as you can get, in my opinion. As for the rest of the album, it swivels between being more electronic or more organic sounding. Some tracks uh, are demonstrably on one side. Like, Crystalline Pulsar is definitely a dance track that embraces its electronic sounds, and Hexagonal Topography 1 is definitely a chill-out track with very little electronic sounds. Even though that's pretty much all MIDI, but you know what I mean. But a lot of them are, you know, kind of in between. A track like Secondhand Beats, for example, has a lot of funkier instrumentation, melodies, and bass lines played on actual basses and pianos and the like, as opposed to MIDI sounds. I mean, there's still loops, but you know what I mean. But there's still rigid, banging electronic percussion going on, and it's... I don't know, it's a cool mix there. And there's no real anomalies on this album, or things that you're just weirdly popping once and then never come back again. Like, Inner City Cut Up helps make Surface Area the Triad feel more at home here, and Hexagonal Topography 2 adheres more to the overall sound of the album than the first part did as well. Though even so, it's not like they would have been total anomalies without that. I don't know. Point is, I just really like that sonic balance this album creates. There's even three tracks on here made in GarageBand, and at this point they just kind of blend in. They're just there. Maybe the violence on Cyan, Sangria, Plateau, or a bit of a giveaway is obvious stock loops, but that plenty of people have used before, but they don't stick out nearly as badly as some older tracks of mine. Now, once again, it's not an album I imagine being for everyone. If this combination of electronic and jazz isn't your aesthetic of choice, this becomes an album of dreadfully boring, nondescript vlog background music, or maybe even barely a step above being elevator music. I can see people making the case that by being in the middle in so many regards, it fails to be much of anything interesting or compelling at all. Too up-tempo for the chill-out people, too down-tempo for the dance people, it could just end up becoming a nothing album for nobody besides me. Or maybe people just feel like it has none of my best tracks, I don't know. I'm just coming up with possible critiques myself. That doesn't necessarily mean these are going to apply, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm always interested in hearing people's feedback on that kind of stuff. Even if they don't like the album, it's always cool to hear. I mean, I haven't seen people reacting particularly negatively to this album, but I haven't seen people reacting reacting to it much at all. <laughs> in all too common symptom of being an obscure Bandcamp artist. But I personally like this album a lot. Every track on here is a personal highlight, and is among the most cohesive any album of mine has ever been. I think it is important to have that one old album that I myself really enjoy as a bit of an ego booster, even if it's no one else's thing. You are still an audience for your own music. 
Not to say people should never make music to please anyone besides themselves, I don't think music would be as interesting then, but I imagine if you're not enjoying your own music, then the process of making it must be really draining. A little self-love never hurt everyone, so long as you're not overdoing it and just getting up in people's faces about it, you know? So, yeah. Uh, in my opinion, Marble Jar is a great album, and, uh, that's it. <laughs>